Up till this point, Ultra Bridge is a band that has had a lot to like for me, and a little bit that keeps me from really loving this band. I still stand by a statement that I've made that they are one of the best rock bands to come out post-millennium. But for me, 2013's Fortress is the album that really showcased what this band can do when they focus. Prior to this album, they definitely had some really good songs. I thought Blackbird is a really good album. I thought AB3 was okay, and I thought the first album was good. But this is the album for me that just really showcased what this band can do, as I've already said. There was a lot more diversity on here. There was a lot of attempts at varying the song length. So you'll definitely get a few basic rock tracks and then you'll get some songs that are a little bit more progressive and do a little bit more interesting things. Just a lot more variety overall and this is an album that I do really enjoy. I think this might be Miles' weakest performance on an Alter Bridge album. If you watch my review for Last Hero, I talk about it on there. I think that his work with Slash hurt his voice in a way. He tried a different style with Slash, and I do like him trying something different and then bringing that back to the band that he's primarily with. But I don't know that that style that he tried with this higher pitched singing, I don't really think it worked for him. It seemed a little bit too raspy, and I feel like that did hurt his voice a little bit. I'm not saying his voice is bad by any means on here. I'm just saying it felt like he was a little bit out of his comfort zone. Not as much as on those first two Slash albums, but still, probably his weakest performance on Alter Bridge. Still good, but probably his weakest performance. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into these tracks. The album opens with the song Cry of Achilles, and this album is pretty unique in that it opens and closes with two of the best Ultra Bridge songs of all time. This song is pretty damn progressive. It starts off with a pretty fast paced acoustic guitar picking before going into a heavier section with a decent amount of energy. It's not super fast, I would say upper mid tempo. There's a little bit of pace changing and guitar riff changing throughout the intro. There's a lot of riffs going on. It's pretty cool. And then you get into the first verse, which starts off pretty heavy, before going into a softer section. I really like the drum beat during the verses. It's pretty catchy, it's kind of fun, and it works really well. The softer part has Miles singing in a quieter tone than he does in the start of the first verse. There's some clean electric guitar playing and that catchy drum beat before the song gets heavier again for the chorus. This is a pretty good use of a mix of soft and heavy. Most songs that do that tend to just have a soft verse and then a heavy chorus. You'll have the rare occasion where it's a heavy verse, soft chorus. So after the first chorus, they go into the second verse, which basically cuts out the heavy part and just goes straight into the softer section of the first verse. So they're doing that again, although they do build on that and add a bit of a heavier guitar as the second verse progresses back to the chorus. So there's at least something different in there. The midsection of the song starts off with the bass player getting some attention as he's the primary instrument playing with the guitars and drums kind of filling it out. We get some distorted vocals by Miles as we get a bridge. Then we get a decent enough slow guitar solo before the final chorus. And then we get a little bit of a faster solo and then some more vocals and then the song ends. This is a really good track. I like the change-ups a lot. I like how it doesn't just stick to the same formula. It kind of stays close enough to that that you can get your head around it if you're not into super complicated music. But at the same time, it strays enough to where I don't feel like I'm just hearing the same thing over and over again. This is an awesome track and a great way to start off the album. Next, we have the song Addicted to Pain. And this one's a more straightforward, heavier track. The verses are pretty fast, the chorus slows down a little bit, and the bridge is a little bit slower. But otherwise, it's a pretty straightforward, heavier track. It's got some nice guitar riffs in it, the vocals are solid, I like the melodies a lot. And the solo is pretty enjoyable and a proper length. If this were recorded today, the solo would probably be half as long if it is because that's it at all. 
I can definitely appreciate having a straightforward, heavier track after a song with a lot of change-ups like we got with Cry of Achilles. This is another really good track. Lead It Dry is the next track. This one starts off really heavy with a heavy guitar riff, some fast-paced drumming before moving into a much slower verse for a much slower song. The verses are still reasonably heavy. There's some distorted guitar riffs playing. Miles has some decent vocals during the verses. The chorus is fairly simple. There's not a lot to it. But the beautiful thing about this chorus and why it works is they don't overdo it. They don't drag it out too long. It shows up, it does its job, and then they move on to the next verse. After the second chorus, the song gets softer. There's a quieter section where you hear some clean electric guitars playing and Miles singing in a much quieter tone before moving into a bluesy guitar solo that I would guess is Miles playing. It's a really nice guitar solo before moving into the final chorus and then ending. This is another very good track and another song that does something different from the two previous. Lover is the first softer song on this album, and honestly, this is the first song I also don't really care for. I do appreciate that they are doing something different than the three previous tracks, but unfortunately the song drags out way too long and doesn't really do anything. So the first couple verses we get are pretty soft. Miles is singing in a very whispery, soft sounding vocal style. I think the first verse to slip to the void from the previous album. And this section isn't bad actually. It drags on a little bit, but it's not too bad actually. Eventually we get a build to what I assume would be considered the chorus. But for this, all the song does is get heavier and Miles sings a little louder. He's still singing with the same vocal melody that he was singing with before. It's just that the song is a little heavier. And then the song goes into a bridge, which is something different. And then back to a verse and a chorus and eventually ends. Nothing really happens during this song. There's not a dramatic change between the verses and the chorus. I think either one could have worked as part of a song, but I think using them both in one song, doing the same thing over and over again, doesn't really work for me. There's not enough of a change between the verse and the chorus for me. And that just makes the song end up dragging. It's not awful by any means. I wouldn't demand anybody skip it, if I was listening to this album with somebody, but it's definitely not a track I go back to on my own. Next, we have this song, The Uninvited, and this is the first song that feels like we're getting a bit of repetition. This song reminds me a lot of a lesser version of Bleed It Dry. The song has a similar heaviness to it. It's also at a slower pace. It's fairly basic verse chorus verse chorus there's not a solo I think there was a bridge but I forgot and I just listened to the song the song does have some cool effects that play in the second verse which does give it a little bit more atmosphere and I did hear a cool guitar effect at one point and the song itself is actually not too bad it's pretty decent but it doesn't really do a whole lot for me Peace is Broken rounds out the first half of the album, and this is another fairly slow-paced song. It's more slower mid-tempo, so it's a little faster than the three previous tracks that we've had. It's slightly heavier than Bleed It Dry or The Uninvited. There's a pretty decent guitar riff that goes on throughout the verse. This song has probably the best chorus we've had to this point. I really like the chorus a lot. Something that does annoy me about the song is we finally get a solo at the end of the song. One of the staples of Mark's playing is he likes to do the solo at the end of the track instead of in the middle. And Miles is singing, the piece is broken over that, which is kind of annoying. I feel like Miles had his time to do his vocals. If we're finally getting a solo, I'd kind of like to have the solo without any vocals over it. But it's a minor complaint. This is still a pretty decent track. I forgot to mention, I do like a lot of the melodies during the bridge of this track. You have both Mark and Miles singing during that section, which does give this song a little bit something different for this album. It's still a good track, it's just not my favorite on the album. Calm the Fire feels like Alter Bridge channeling their inner muse, if you will. The song starts out with a softer intro with Miles singing in 
a different vocal style for him. And when I hear this, all I can think of is the band Muse. The song eventually gets heavier and faster, and this is the fastest song we've had since the second track. I really like the verses a lot. They have a really nice flow to them. I like the drum beats, the guitar riffs, everything flows so nicely together. Miles' vocals are great and the melodies really build as the song goes towards the chorus. For the chorus, the song slows down, which isn't necessarily a bad thing if the melodies are done well, but I don't really feel like this chorus does a whole lot for me. It doesn't ruin the song by any means, but it doesn't take that song that extra little step that it needs to be to be a great song. There's not really a guitar solo either, there's just a bridge, and then we get the final chorus and the song ends. I think what makes this track is its uniqueness for the band. They haven't done a song that really sounds like this before, and that really works for me. I just think if there had been a solo and a better chorus, the song would have worked a lot better, but it's still pretty solid. You want to talk about a track that can bring the process of recording this review to a screeching halt, We've got the next song, Waters Rising. I've had so many distractions when listening to this track, it's pretty ridiculous. This song is the second softer song on the album. It's got a very Tremonte vibe to it, his solo stuff, which makes a little sense considering Mark takes over lead vocals on this track. This album also came out a year after his first solo album. I really like this one a lot. It's got good atmosphere to it. The guitars are clean electric and have a similar tone and playing style to what Mark used to do with Creed and some of the early Alter Bridge material. The verses flow really nicely. Miles throws in some vocals and they build towards the chorus. The chorus is heavier and has a nice melody to it and really brings the song together well. The bridge also has a little bit of a different atmosphere, which I like, and Miles does a lot more vocals during that section. We get a brief guitar solo after the third chorus. It's a little shorter than I would like, but at least it's there. I like the change of having Mark on vocals. This is a much better example of Alter Bridge doing a softer song than the first track we got. And this track just flows really nicely. I don't have a whole lot to say about it since I had so many distractions when listening to it, but this is a really good track. Possibly my favorite one we've had since track three. Farther Than the Sun is another heavier, slower paced track. We've had quite a few of them on this album. I really like the guitar tone on this song. This is the heaviest song we've had since Addicted to Pain. Other than that, this is just a pretty basic verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, chorus song. There's not really a whole lot special to this track. That being said, I do really enjoy this song. It's got a little bit of a different vibe than some of the other songs we've had on the album. And it's just a pretty solid track. It's basic, but it's enjoyable. Cry A River is another pretty basic, heavier song that I also really enjoy. My only real complaint about this track is there's no solo. I really like the opening guitar riff. I think the verses are solid. The chorus is one of the most memorable on the album. And I think the song flows really well. I just would have liked them to have taken an extra 30 to 45 seconds and added a guitar solo in there. Other than that, it's a really enjoyable song, but it's very basic, so there's not a whole lot to say about it. All Ends Well is another ballad, the third one on the album. In some ways, this is possibly my least favorite song on the album. Its only real competition is the song Lover, which in some ways is a worse song than this, but at least that song is memorable. I don't really remember this song very well at all. I do a little bit right now because I just heard it. But this is definitely not one of those songs I come back to. The guitars have a very bright sound to them. Miles has a nice voice and sings it well, but the song itself, the melodies, the music, just don't really do anything interesting to hold my attention. It's just another Alter Bridge ballad. There's nothing special to it. The album ends with the title track, Fortress, and this is a stellar track. This is easily my second favorite track on the album, and one of my favorite songs of all time by Alter Bridge. Could potentially be my second favorite Alter Bridge song. First being Cry of Achilles. And that's something really impressive, when a band can 
start and end an album with two of my favorite songs of theirs, they're doing something right. Hell, you can add Bleed It Dry and Addicted to Pain amongst my favorite songs by them of all time as well. But to start and end an album with possibly my two favorite songs by them of all time is pretty damn impressive. Both songs are pretty damn proggy and add a lot of different elements so you're not just getting a very basic song. So both of the first two verses are softer with a lot of really quick guitar picking. I'm pretty sure there's some sort of a delay effect on there. It sounds like it has to be. It sounds really cool. The verses are very slow paced. Miles sounds really good during these verses. The chorus isn't the catchiest thing ever, but it doesn't really need to be. It does its job. It's not disappointing when they get to the chorus. It stays with the song. It helps the songs flow. It doesn't really elevate the song any, but it doesn't drag it down at all either. And it doesn't overstay its welcome. So after the second chorus, we get a bridge and then the song gets faster and heavier and almost starts to resemble metal a little bit. And we get a really good guitar solo, possibly the best guitar solo on the album before going into a final verse and chorus and song ends. I like all the elements of this song, the solo, the effect used on the clean guitars, the vocals, the drumming. I love the change ups. Again, we have a song that has a very standard way it does its verses and its chorus and then completely changes that during parts of the midsection. This is an awesome track and a great way to end the album. And at the end of the day, we end up with Alter Bridge's best album. They do a lot here. They add some new elements. They go prog in a couple of tracks. The songwriting is incredibly consistent. I feel like they could use some more pace changes throughout the album, and especially in some of the songs. But other than that, there's not really a whole lot I can complain about. There are a couple of tracks that I'm not too keen on, but even those at worst I would give a five out of 10. They're not awful by any means. And this album has four or five songs, which would be amongst my favorite songs by this band of all time. Possibly my two favorite songs by them of all time. And this is a great ride of an album to take. I remember when this came out just being blown away by it. I was shocked that this band could come up with something this good. I know what I would kind of like to give this album in terms of a rating, but given what I ended up giving Last Hero, and if you're watching this in the playlist, then you'll see that coming up. I'm going to have to give this album a 9 out of 10. Excellent. This is a very good album. It is their magnum opus. I don't see them ever doing better than this. I would like them to prove me wrong. It does have a few flaws, but overall the consistency and the quality is there. And there's some growth and a lot of depth to this album. A great album and a great step forward for the band.